Let me know if you can see the slide. It's the Empire State Building. Again, for those of you that just came in, in order to chat, you go down to two, individual user, and then you will choose my name, Melissa Armel, and type, and then I can see it. <coughs> Got it? Wonderful, welcome. Welcome everyone, my name is Melissa Armo. For those of you that don't know me, I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh, which I started in 2008. That's crazy, that's 15 years ago. Getting up on the 15 year anniversary of The Stock Swoosh, I can't even believe it myself, but time really, 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 really flies. Um, you start trading and then you get into it and then before you know it, it's one year, two years, 10. And if you've been trying to trade and making an effort to trade and really wanting to trade um, for a long, long time, then you understand that it's a process. You know, it's nobody's born and wakes up today and all of a sudden knows how to trade. It says, I'm going to trade, I'm going to be successful, and then boom, you press the button and you make money. So when I first started out, I took one class and that class did not teach me how to make money, but I, I knew that it was possible. I knew it was possible to make money in the market, um, and I did learn a basic foundation for technical analysis, which is how I make the trading choices I make today. So today's webinar, we're gonna talk, of course, about making money, and, and we're gonna talk about making 20,000 a month, but really that's on average $1,000 a day. Depending on your risk, your risk to make that much money will have to be around $1,000 per trade risk. I risk more, you can risk less. You could try to make $1,000 a week. You could risk $200 a trade and an attempt to make money and just add on to your normal income. No one said you have to do this for a living. This is something you could do on the side. So I would say I'm about 50-50 right now with the people that are trading with me. Some of them are doing it full time. Some of them are retired. They're doing it for extra income. Some of them are doing it on the side and have a regular job. So they just don't have the time to devote to trading Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So they're doing it on the side either for extra money or trying to make a transition into trading full-time while they work another job. So <laughs> again, for those of you that don't know what I do, I short. Now that doesn't mean I never go long, but I prefer to short. If you have been trading in the last three days or even the last week, you know that it has been a very good time to short the stock market or pretty much anything that exists. So we've had an incredible week um, an incredible month and uh, looking forward to seeing how we close out the year of 2023. When I started trading, again, I started trading in 2008. When I started trading, the market was bullish. So actually, you know, I taught myself how to short stocks in a bullish market. The market I want to point out is still bullish. We're still in an uptrend of the market. However, we've had many opportunities to short and you can short in an uptrend. You can short in an uptrend, you can short in a downtrend, you can short in a sideways neutral trend. So it doesn't matter if the market's rallying or falling, you can find specific stocks to trade and short either way. One of the reasons that I prefer to short is because you can get big moves, large moves, fast, quick moves in stocks when they fall. And again, if you were trading in the last few days, you know that too. So if you have questions, if you are interested in learning what I do and signing up for my course, the class is this weekend. I will talk about that at the end. I only have a few more classes left before the end of the year. Only three more classes this year in 2023. I can't believe how fast this year has gone. In a few days, it will be October. It's nuts how fast this year has went. But October will be earning season, which makes for good trading. We'll talk about that more later, but if you want more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or you can call me at 929-3200-GAP or you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I do appear on TV. I appear on various different channels discussing the market. I'm on uh, Ameritrade Network, which is Schwab now. On Wednesday, I will be discussing the market. So I talk about the market a lot. I talk about the economy. But the reasons that I decide to trade are based on technical analysis. So you may have good data, you may have bad data. It, 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 you don't know exactly what, how the market's gonna react until you see it, okay? So if you could always short something on bad data, <laughs> it wouldn't be that hard to make money. Just like if you could go long on good data in, in the market, 
you know, you'd, everybody would make money. So it's not always the case or vice versa. So when you're reading the price action, you need charts, you need live charts, and you'd have to have an account at a broker with live charts with the pre-market and post-market data if you wanted to trade with me, okay? You would set up a brokerage account at a broker on your own. You can trade my system using options or day trades. I do both, I have people doing both. It's whatever works for you. And if you have any questions about that, as we go along, you can ask me as well. So can you earn a living in the stock market as a professional trader? The answer is yes, yes you can. But as I said earlier, some people are doing it on the side. They like what they do, or they just don't have time to devote to trading. They have other things going on in their lives and they're trading to make extra money. But if you wanna do it full time, you can. It's a full time job with part time hours though, which is what I like about trading. So how can you do this? How can you learn earn a living doing this? You have to be profitable. If you, if you can't make money trading consistently, it's the consistency that many people lack, it's gonna be hard for you to put together to have something that you can rely on. Because when you go to a job and you work for a job and you get a paycheck every week or every two weeks, you rely on that money to pay your bills. Trading is not, you're getting a check from someone. You're not getting a check in the mail for the market, okay? You have an opportunity to pull market out of the money every single day the market's open, which is Monday through Friday. I trade the US stock market. That's your opportunity to pull money out of, out of the market. And that's not a guarantee. So if you're not doing the right things, you can lose. If you're doing the right things, you can win. If you have no idea what the right things are or no strategy, it's gonna be hard for you to be consistent. You may win some days, lose others. And by the end of the week, you can't pay yourself a check out of your trading account because you weren't consistent. You may have had some winning days, but then you may have had huge losing days. And too many losers means you're upside down. The idea is to win. So I think what people lack that I talked to and have taught, taught how to trade is people lack the consistency in their trading. So for those of you that don't know what I do, I trade gaps and I short, okay? So we're gonna take a look here at the chart of the SPY. This is a daily chart, a chart of the SPY. Again, I have very, very clean charts. Why? Because I wanna look at the price action. I'm not worried about a lot of other crazy things. I'm trying to read what the price is, that's all that counts. I'm one very unusual person that I could trade the tape. If I was reading numbers, I could trade it without even looking at candlesticks. And that's something that a lot of people could never do in today's day and age. But I know how to read the numbers and that's what helps me make money. So let's talk about what is a gap. A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So for example, last week on Wednesday, the market closed at one price, four o'clock Eastern time, the market always closes, we're closed now. And gap down here at 9.30, the next day, this is Thursday morning, and open at a lower price. So we closed here, open here, then we fell, we sold off. So again, you could have shorted this. We were already short in puts, but we also shorted this here too. So my strategy allows me to predict the movement that the market or stock is gonna make. The idea of momentum is to get in the trade at a good point in time so that you can make money. Because again, we were talking about winners and losers. You also have to have some big winners. And this market, again, for a lot of people this year has been tricky. Maybe the beginning of the year was easy for some people who were going long when we rallied in January. And now it's starting to get a little tricky. Why? Many retail traders prefer to go long. So I found that shorting has given me a niche. Some people will think they can short everything and anything. That is not true. Okay, just so you know, that's completely false. You cannot short everything that gaps down. You can't short everything that gaps up. You can't short everything even in a bearish market. Say we turn red, say we go red, say we, we flip and go in a downtrend for the year. We're not right now, but say we could, we could. Anyway, some people will think it's, it's, it's time to go long soon because we're down so much. You saw the market trying to rally today, okay? But for me, I just get up in the morning and I look at the gap, like the gap in the market that I showed you. I rate the gap. And if you come to me, you'll learn how to do this. And if it's good, you do it. If it's don't, you don't, you don't do it. You don't do anything then at all. So you go day by day. And again, the benefit of learning how to read the immediate price action of something helps you make quick decisions, fast decisions, decisions, daily decisions, and more intense focus decisions. And you can do this even if you're in long-term trades, even if you're in swing trades. 
even if you're in long-term investments, okay? In my opinion, the only way to make money in the market consistently in any type of market environment is to trade gaps, and specifically gaps that have momentum. Now, I coined and termed my strategy the golden gap, but it's like finding gold in the market because it has a large move, okay? So momentum is a large, large move. The thing about gaps is many traders do the reverse of what they should be doing or they have no idea how to trade gaps and therefore they just tend to shy away from them. But one of the things that's so special about my class is it's a method that you can apply to anything in the market that trades, that has a daily chart. It could be an ETF, it could be a stock, it could be the market ETFs, like I said, it could be gold or whatever. As long as it has a daily chart, has an open and a close and trades in the US stock market, you can apply my method and you could do it and trade it any way you want. That means options, that means day trades, that means swing trades, that means long-term trades. And for now, as long as the market exists, there will always be a close in the open, there will always be gaps, and gap trading will always be powerful. Again, I've been trading for 15 years. It's crazy, but it's true. There, it's been it's powerful now to trade golden gaps as it was 15 years ago. So having a strategy to focus on daily is very important because you don't have distractions. Like the Fed is going to talk on Wednesday or Thursday. I think it's Thursday this week. Jerome Powell is having a some kind of forum or something. It's going to take questions. So the market will be volatile that day. If you're constantly reading economic data, you're like, oh my gosh, the the economic data is good. Why are we falling? Or whatever the case may be. Unemployment's low. This makes no sense. We're dropping. They didn't raise rates. Why did we sell off? You know, you can rationalize anything you want. Again, if you're training to make money, you're, you're not doing this. You're not an economist, okay? And if you're trying to be that, go get a job working for someone and get paid a salary for a job like that. Go work for the administration. Go get a political job. Write, write papers on it where people pay you for your for your thoughts. And there are people out there that do that. I appear on TV with some people like do that. They make money actually just writing papers, newsletters or whatever. That's it. They don't give, you know, uh, predictions like the market's going to rally or fall or this stock's going to fall or trade. Okay. Having a strategy will help you succeed. And again, it is about the focus. I also train in a, very, in, in a certain way that most people don't understand, and it's trading momentum. I think this Netflix chart is a good example. The SPY is another example, too. We shorted uh, the Netflix last week. I forget exactly the time I get into it. But anyways, we shorted it, and we shorted it here, okay, and it fell off a cliff. Many, many, many people would have said the trade's over, it's done, it's had a big move, it can't go any further. No. So we captured a gymongous move in this stock that fell, okay, because we traded the momentum, we got it. We could have got in earlier, but you could say that about any trade, really. But at the end of the day, the reason that I make money and some trades are so powerful that I do is I'm trading the momentum, okay? And a lot of traders don't understand momentum. They don't trade it. They're afraid of it. And again, last week in the market was a good example, too. We'll talk about some market trades here because the market, the momentum last week in the market was to the downside, okay? Not to the upside. It was to the downside. And if you were afraid to trade that, well, you, and you went long, for example, you got burnt. So anyways, let's talk here about what is a gap. So a gap is a difference, like I said, between the close and the open. So Netflix, I'm going to go all the way back. Closed here at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, gap down, fell, boom. You could have shorted this. As a day trade, you could have bought a put. You could have done a swing trade in Netflix, fell off a cliff, okay? And again, the reasons why this thing, that thing, the other thing, we're not going to get into now. We're just talking in generalities today because I'm, I'm only talking here with you for 45 minutes an hour, however long we discuss. You would learn how I knew that the momentum would continue in Netflix in the bigger class. But it's the idea that if you're trading momentum, you can make money. And again, that's how you're going to get large trades. Large trades by, what do I mean by a large trade? Large risk to reward or return on investment, depending if you're doing a day trade or an option. That's how you have trades that are such big winners. They'll cover your losses. And you still can be up. 
and make money because I do have some trades that lose. So we did all these options trades last week and one trade I lost in, it was an option, but I had so many, so many winners last week and so many big winners, it didn't matter. I lost an Apple. I did an Apple put last week. I think I just paid too much for it. I could have got out of it with a little bit of profit at break even. I took it into the Friday, lost. But I made so much money and everything else I did, it didn't matter. So again, when you're getting huge trades and lots of winners, you're going to be less stressed when you have a trade that doesn't work. You will also be less stressed when you have a day where you don't trade. So let's talk again about here, what is a gap? Because this is the meat and potatoes of what I do. What is a gap? A stock gap, so the opening price today, is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple, okay? So the stock market gaps almost every single day. And stocks really gap every day too. Not every gap though is what I call a golden gap. Or like I said, a stock that will have a large move, a momentum move, a predictable move that you would wanna play. So when I get up in the morning, my process is a process that you can learn from me and do yourself. You don't need me for the rest of your life once you do the class. Now, I think people find me having me as a mentor helpful uh, because the fact is that I call the trades live in the room. And if you're on the options newsletter, I'm sending you the trades and telling you what I did, what I rated, what I like, what I'm going to do. So that helps as a support system when you're learning. And again, everyone has a learning curve. So one of the things I find so interesting about having the business as long as I've had is that, you know, people want to wait and think and talk about trading with me, but you may have a learning curve. So you can wait as long as you like. I will teach my system as long as I decide to continue the business and do it. But the fact is, if you have a learning curve and you need my help, you should get started as soon as possible because everyone has a different learning curve. I was talking on the phone with a gentleman today uh, who I hadn't talked to for a couple of months and some of the things we went over that we already went over and he needed to hear them again. And some of the things were new things that we had to go over. So, you know, I mean, you're gonna have questions as you go through this process. And again, that's the benefit of being in the live trading room with me and asking me questions whenever you want to, whether it's calling me on the phone, emailing me, or in the room. Now let's talk again about what institutional money is because how I make the choices, how I make the decision, how did I know Netflix would continue lower and the SPY and the QQQs is that institutional money was selling off the market last week. So institutional money dumped, dumped shares, for example, of Netflix last week, it sold off. So on the right side of things, if you wanted to make money in Netflix, you would have been short, okay? We also did Adobe. This is a daily chart. Again, what happened to Adobe? Adobe closed here, gap down. This was an earnings trade, actually. So Adobe closed up here above 550, gap down here in the morning, open, rallied, dropped. Broke 530 on that one particular day. See it? So again, in reference to Adobe, this was a short or you would have bought a put in it. Okay, see it? You can see it, I will reset it, hold on. Can everybody hear me? You should see slide on Adobe, Adobe chart, slide 15. Okay, good. Okay, so this you could have done, and we did do that. Again, this was a short. Okay, that was back Friday the 15th. So again, the momentum here is to the downside. If you went long that day, you lost. So what, is, what does momentum look like? It looks like power, where it moves a stock. and. And I'm just using Adobe as an example because the price point of that is very, very, very expensive where you have a lot of institutions that are long Adobe, short Adobe, whatever, okay? It's a powerful, powerful stock. I consider that in my list of the bucket of market stocks, actually. But institutional money is always in charge. It's in charge of the market and stocks at all times, even if you think it isn't, it is. And that's something that you gotta remember. So again, 
this is going to be a very, very, very interesting period between now and the end of 2023 because a lot of people are, again, wanting, thinking that the market is going to continue higher and make new highs and all of that. Whether we hold where we are, where we are here today, I didn't see exactly where we closed, but whether we hold here where we are, rally and continue up, I do not think that the market makes brand new all-time highs by the end of the year. Well, we could theoretically. I think that has very low odds. So if you're going with what's happening with institutional money, you're going to have so much of a higher chance to make money in the market. When I do trades, I'm doing short-term trades. Short-term trades in a day trade is a minute out in a couple of minutes. Or in an option, I'm doing the weeklies. But it's, it's, I'm still looking at institutional money. And the genius in my system is I'm reading the institutional money that's in the stock for the long haul or out of it that's exiting it or entering it but i'm playing it on a minutia time frame on the one minute chart of the daily chart to make the choices and decisions to get in to get out to book money because again the only thing that you should care about is the whole point of making money that is the reason you're doing this that is the reason that you're trading that's the reason that you should trade anyways but you don't want to go against institutional money you want to trade with the power not against it because again, if you are against what's happening, it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to make money. So you want to be able to just ride the coattails of that institutional money, just ride it down, in other words, you would short, or buy it and then just ride it up, okay? So again, I prefer to short rather than going long, but I will go long. So let's talk more about institutional money. Learn to spot institutional money and trade with it. That's gonna be so much easier for you to be profitable. Make your trading life easier so you can make money on a regular basis. And again, if something doesn't set up or rate good that day, you don't do any trades. But you have to make money on a regular basis if you wanna trade for a career. And I think you have to do it if you wanna even do it on the side because it will, it will weigh on you if you're losing over a period of time. And again, I've had the business a long time now. One of the things I find so interesting is trade, people will trade for years and lose and they won't change what they're doing. I don't, I don't know why. Or they'll still believe or think they can pay $500 for a class and learn how to trade and make money. And that's not realistic, okay? You must be serious about what you're doing and you must be committed. I always was since the jump. But I think that is also my personality. I'm very, very serious about pretty much everything I do, whether it's decorating my apartment, you know, or, you know, deciding to trade the stock market or going on TV, you know, everything that I do, I'm a very, very serious person. If that's not your nature, then you gotta kind of take a step back because you can lose money trading if you don't know what to do. And if you don't take it seriously, you will lose. And if you're trading and you don't have a strategy, you'll lose too. Okay, so you have to have certain pieces of the puzzle together in order to be successful. And again, some people do, some people don't. Some people do, but they don't know how to put it together. They may have a strategy, but it doesn't really work. Sometimes it does in a bullish market, for example, but then other times it doesn't. But I'm following the moves that capture the momentum of what's happening whether it's buying or selling in a stock that institutional money is creating, okay? And that I'm doing it on a very, very small time frame. So again, I said this earlier, and this is, I'm just reminding you again, institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times, even if you think it isn't, it is. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market stocks, creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you are really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. So you've got to understand how to read this. And, and again, I created my own system where I became a specialist in doing this, where I'm actually trying to determine if institutions are buying the stock or selling it. I'm actually analyzing it. And everything I'm doing is in the charts. It's in the price action. So this is where you will go through the learning process. Comprehending how to redefine and train with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. And then you say, oh, wait a minute. We're rallying, but this is really a rally with retail traders. It's gonna sell off again because institutions are not buying here, it's retail traders. We're gonna sell off again soon, let's wait. Elevate yourself, you're trading your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. 
So this is a really, really good one here. Actually, you could have shorted Oracle today. We did Oracle a couple weeks ago. Stock closed here, gap down. Stock closed up here around 126 and change, gap down, open in the morning. Around 111, boom, fell. We shorted it and we bought a put. So again, if you're someone that does not have uh, an account size to, re to do day oh. trades, you do not have a margin account, you cannot take 2,000 shares short of Oracle on margin, then you can buy a put in Oracle. We did both, okay? But you can do what you can afford. You have to do what you can afford, okay? So if you can only afford to trade options, which you can open up a $2,000 options account, then, then you're buying a put in Oracle. You're not doing the day trade, okay? But either way, you see the momentum here. You see the momentum, this is a big fat red bar. Stock fell off a cliff, dropped down here $5, boom. More than that, actually. So this is what you wanna get. This is being dumped, this is being sold off by institutional money. We did it, we got in, got out. And again, that's the whole point of trading, to chunk it out. We also did Square, I got out of this too early, but Square is a good example here of institutional money. Square is just selling off almost every single solitary day. It didn't today, but you can see here a square just fell, 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 fell. Nobody is buying the square here. No institutions are buying square. It's being sold off or it has been sold off. Okay. So again, talking about momentum, this is momentum. This is selling people. So many opportunities there. But again, it's all about institutional money, learning how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs. You can take the position in the right direction and get out after the move happens for profit. But you have to understand how to train with this side of power. You gotta be able to find the picks. It's very important because this power has the ability to pay you. And not only that, the market has the ability to pay you. So knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to becoming a successful trader. And you can wave big trading on the side of power. So again, I must stress that institutional money is always in charge. Even if you think it isn't, it is. Learning how to read it is critical. And how do I do that? In the gap. So I get up in the morning in the pre-market, whatever time I get up, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., whatever time early, I see if anything's gapping down. And then I go through the process and I rate it. So I know well before the open, well before the market even opens, if I'm going to trade that day or not. And if, if so, what? <laughs> and I will send out options trades in the pre-market early. You cannot do the trades until the open, okay? But I send trades out sometimes very, very early. I am gonna go over the options newsletter, which is here. This is where, two, I'm gonna go over two spy trades. This was the biggest trades that we had last week. Huge trades, and we're gonna go over them. So on Friday, so if you wanna join the options newsletter, this is a subscription service where you do not have to take my class. In order to join the live room, the class is a prerequisite. In order to join and subscribe to the options newsletter, you can just subscribe. I have a six month subscription and a 12 month subscription. But anyways, getting back to this, this, this was just an awesome call, if I do say so myself. So on Friday, the 15th, it was, a, it was late. I mean, I, I, I waited. 11.04, I called the 442 strikes in the SPY that expired last Friday. You could have been in this till the last day. I wasn't, I got out Thursday. But you actually could have been in this till the last day. You still would have been up. You still would have made money. That's insane, but it's true. So um, here was the day that I called the trade. So you see right in here, take it over. I called the 442s and you see the move that this made. So this is momentum, people. Boom. This is today. This was Friday. How do I determine one gap over the other? By rating it. Again, I will do, I will do multiple options in one day. Sometimes I'll do more than one day trade. I'd usually prefer to do one, but I'll go with the highest rated gap. That's always the case. Now, in reference to options, because I'm not trading options in one minute, two minute, three minutes, like I might a day trade, I will put on multiple options trades because I don't have to be right on top of all of them. So I will say this one rates good, this one rates good, this one rates good, I'm doing them all in reference to doing the options. But anything that rates over 20 points, you could take it in the direction of the gap. This was an awesome call. This stop fell from the point that I called it, which was above the 442. It came down here and dropped, didn't quite, 
get down as much as I wanted it to on Friday. We had a late start to Friday because we first rallied and we dropped. Again, I was already out of the trade. I was already out of the trade. But this went 12 points plus through the strike into the very last day. It was so dirt cheap when we did it. $1.25. So again, this is an advanced trader risk. We will go over a beginner risk here. 70 contracts if you would have risked 87.50. And you would, this, is, this isn't even Friday. You would have made more on Friday. I didn't, I didn't look what Friday's was, but I know it was lower. Uh, sold it on Thursday. 10 profit was $61,250. This was 700% return on investment. This trade just fell. There was nothing to do. This trade was never down. For the moment that I called the trade, it was never down. There's like There was almost no management needed to this trade. It was never going to go back up to the strike. It was never going to go against me. It was impossible. It was never going to happen. It was just a beautiful trade. Anyways, if you had a beginner risk, okay, of $1.25 per contract, you could have done one. Ten contracts. And if you had risked twelve fifty, one thousand two hundred fifty dollars, which which really anyone should be able to do, and sold it Thursday, you could have made eight thousand seven hundred fifty dollars in one trade. So I I get this a lot where people are constantly, 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 constantly telling me they don't have enough money to risk a large advanced trader risk. I have been trading for fifteen years, people, and I invented the system I do. I don't expect anyone to be tr taking as much risk as me, even if you had the cash. There's no reason that you can't trade with $500 risk. A thousand. No reason. You do not need some massive account to trade my system. But a lot of people just want to wait till they have all this money. But I don't even think that's the case. I think that's an excuse. I think overall people have been burned by taking classes or trading the market and not making money and really people have been burned in general because they take bad trades. You know, of all the people I've ever talked to since I started the business in 2012, it's 11 years now since I started the Sox Wish, most people have lost the majority of the money that they've ever lost trading from bad trades. So if you go, if you start at that and you acknowledge that the fact that most of the money you've lost is from bad trades, then you have to say to yourself, you need to learn how to take good trades or you're never going to make any money, you know? So this is a good example of what? Selling, selling pressure, momentum. Example of a short, huge trade, huge call. And then again, the idea of holding something, having the conviction to do it, but you could have got out. I mean, I just wanna point out, you could have got out, you know, you could have got out the day that I called it. If you're so nervous about holding trades, you could also split it. You could have done, for example, and again, I tell new people this, you could have taken 10 contracts, got out of five, Friday or the Monday. So I called it on the Friday. We got down Monday. You could have got out of half, held the rest. Again, do whatever is easiest for yourself to be more relaxed with your trading. You couldn't have lost then because the money you would have booked on the half of the position, even if the rest had trailed against you, which it did not, you couldn't have lost. You wouldn't have lost in it. Do you understand? So again, we talked about this actually in the trading room this morning because someone was asking about something that I had just called today. You you have to kind of know yourself. You have to read the room. The room is you. The room that you're in, you have to look in the mirror and say, okay, wait a minute. Am I okay with taking this much risk or not? Can I take a $1,000 risk? You say, well, I can. I can afford it. But do I feel comfortable with that? Maybe you don't. So then you, then you, then you take 500 because you can still make money with that. But I think I think a lot of people, and I get these questions all the time, because I teach my method in a class once a month, and some of you I recognize, and I've had this conversation with some of you, some of you are new, I don't. If you've been training for a while, acknowledge the fact that you may have taken classes and not learned things, but most of the money you've lost is from the, is from the stock market. And every time you lost in a trade, somebody took that money from you. It might have been me. You might have been long the market last week, and I had a massive week. And that would have been money that I might have taken from you. That's the whole point of trading. It's a, it's a winner-takes-all kind of mentality. You know what I mean? It's a, 
it's one winner and one loser for every trade. You understand what I'm saying? So on every trade that you take, somebody's on the other side of it. You know what I'm saying? And then you get a move like this. Again, you could have played it multiple, multiple, multiple ways. So you could have played it as puts, which we did. You could have day traded the market last week, which we did. You could have swing traded the market last week. You could have done that too. The other benefit also of learning my system is if you're in longs and you, and you rate a bearish gap and you say, crap, this rate's really, really good. I better get out of my long. And that's another way to use the system too because the system would have told you the market was lower and then you would have exited your long. So you would have cut your losses if you were in longs or got out with profit before it went against you. Do you know what I'm saying? So anyways, this was a big call. This was the biggest trade last week. Any questions about that? We also did the 440s, which I called on Monday. So I called the 440s on, it was in the pre-market. It was right before 9 a.m. Again, we were down on Monday morning. So again, this was another put, same, same chart, okay? Day that we did this here was here, okay? Closed here, gap down, rally. So this trade initially was down before it went, okay? And again, that goes back to the same thing as we were talking about, the whole philosophy of understanding what to do because you won't be upset if the trade's down. I called it for a Friday expiration. It's only Monday. You don't take any more risks than you can afford. You let the trade play out, okay? This is the second biggest trade of the week. Cost was cheap, $1.40. Contracts was 60, risk was 8,400, sold at eight. This wasn't Thursday. Again, this kept going Friday. Profit was 39,600 or 471% return on investment. This is taking it on Monday and exiting Thursday. And that's not even that long of a time. It's four days. If you did a beginner risk around 1,200, 1,269 contracts, 5,940. This is how you also can exponentially grow a, a small account. So if you have, the, say you have $10,000 in an account and you risk 1,260 on a trade like this, then you get up the next morning, you got 16 grand in your account. Do you follow me? That's how you can get up to a margin account where you have 25,000 in it available that you can start trading and taking the margin trades because you need a minimum of 25,000 to trade on margin unless you go to a prop broker, broker. But again, you could have held this till Friday and made more. I always get this question too. Is this the best exit you could have got? No, I don't always get the best exit. I told you earlier, I did Apple I lost an apple because I waited till Friday for it to go because I thought it would go more and it just wasn't going my way. And I just think I paid too much for that. But I could have got out of that with money before Friday. But it just, I lost in it. So I do not always get the best exit. Sometimes I try to squeeze something more out of something. And sometimes I'm up only a little bit of break even in something. And I try to hold it into the last end of the week to try to get it going. Because again, your, your goal should be to make money. Your goal isn't to not lose. Many traders are trading. I don't even know why they're doing it. They're pressing the button. The trade goes right away. They're fine. They get out with money. If it doesn't, they kill it. They don't even hold it. They don't even know what to do. They're, then, they're, then they're worried about it because they're down. It's like your goal should be to make money. Your goal isn't to be break even. Your goal isn't to not lose. Your goal is to be profitable. Your goal is to make money. And in order to do that, you must be willing to take risk. If you're nervous about your trades, chances are you don't have a good system, don't know what you're doing, or you're risking too much, okay? So cut your risk back, learn what to do, and, and get on board with a good system is all I can say about that. Any other questions here so far? Uh, the market was kind of a sweep. It seems like that now, but in the moment, if you were watching last week, if you were in trades, it really didn't play out that way. It's easy to say now looking back, but it really didn't play out that way. It was very volatile. It was up, it was down, it was up, it was down. Easy to, easy to say now, but looking back, we were trading it and it was not like, we didn't go straight down. We didn't. You're in the midst of learning another system, but have only been curious about philosophy. If you're learning another system, you should be making money. 
And if you're not, then don't waste your time with it, is my two cents on that. While you will have a learning curve with me and will ask questions, you should be able to make money as you go along. I mean, there's no way that people didn't make money with me last week. Could have been a monkey and made money in my trades last week. The only way you couldn't have made money trade with me last week is if you didn't take the trades. So gaps have huge opportunity because they spot power of money. And that's what we're all looking for. That's the whole point. That's, that's what, like, it's not fun to trade and make 10 cents, 15 cents. It's, it's just like, that's like a waste of time. So anyways, how do you find gaps? You can buy a scanner if you want. We're looking for market moves. We're looking for news. We're looking for earnings. It's easy to find them, but we have to get the good ones. But they're out there. They're out there every single solitary day. Now, it's not the busy season this week. Busy season starts in October. It's earnings season. There will be lots and lots and lots of gaps or more gaps than we would normally have in non-earnings season. So we will be very active. So it's a good time to trade. So again, you have to constantly look for the good ones. Some days there's more things than others. And <laughs> I never know. I never know, like I said, that I get up in the morning. But we find gaps and then we rate them using a checklist. Gaps have to be qualified. <coughs> Excuse me. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of a stock. If you find something that tells you that it's going to continue selling off, then that's why you want to get in the position. Again, you can do it as a short, as a day trade short, or you can do it as a put. But again, there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock. It's money. It's not a little bit of money. It's a lot of money. So that's why regional traders really do not move stocks. They may temporarily hold up and move or move something temporarily for a short period of time. But eventually the power of money will come back. It will come back in and it, because it's in charge. And it's in charge of the stock's direction at all times. Trends are set and move with the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. So again, gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps, in which case then I will not trade them. So again, I'm not shorting every bearish gap. I'm not going long every bullish gap. And some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change of direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. You cannot take every gap in the direction of the gap, though. Again, it would be easy to trade if that was the case. You can't short everything to the downside. You cannot take every gap in the opposite direction of the gap either. So just think about it intellectually. There is a thought process involved in what I do. You must use your head. You must use your brain. You must go through the process. That's the point of the prep work. So when I get up in the morning and I'm prepping, and the more work I take and time in the morning to prepare to trade, the better I will do in the day and the more money I will make. So that, that again, is like a lot of people are waiting to trade until after 10 a.m. They didn't even prepare in the morning. Or people are trading on the fly. How could you possibly think you'll be successful if you're going to do that? You won't. Okay, the whole idea is to know what you're going to do ahead of time beforehand. And you're always looking for who's in charge. So but I clipped this in here back to the second week, basically, of September. First week of September. This is a chart of the spy. Who's in charge here? You might have said, oh, my God, the bulls. The bulls are in charge, Melissa. It's a beautiful chart. Let's go along. Let's do it. And now, this is today. This is today. Now, do you, who do you think is in charge? Well, it looks completely different, doesn't it? It looks completely different. But I knew before this happened, that's why we got trades that went ridiculous. You understand? Or I was prepared, ready, ready to pounce when I got the setup that I wanted, which I did. Which I did, okay? I know what to look for, so all I have to do is wait for the setup. And then I get it and I do it without hesitation. And then I take the risk. So again, this is what trips people up with trading. They say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ooh. No, you should not like think that it's going to be as easy as that because it isn't. There's a nuance as to every single thing that you do. Can you learn how to do it? Yes. It's something you can learn and apply by yourself. Let's talk about this in the last webinar I did a couple weeks ago. Kramer has a television show. He appears on TV. He's been on TV for, I don't know, 30 years. Could be longer than that. 
He doesn't have a system that you can learn. He says, I like this. Buy it. He's probably buying Netflix right now, actually. <laughs> I don't know if he is, but I would, I, I'm would. i just throwing that out there. After seeing that sell-off, he's probably buying it. He likes to buy dips. But he doesn't have something that he can say, this is why. This is My system is applicable. You can learn it and apply it to a chart and then come up with the same conclusion as me. You understand the difference? There would be no way to come up with the same conclusion as Kramer in any of his picks, which is why many of them don't work, because he doesn't have a system. He just says, I think this and I think that, and he can't tell you really why looking at the chart. So you come and you learn my system. You can do it for yourself, and that is a huge benefit. The Golden Gap 26-point rating system pinpoints the direction of power money by reading the price action. And you need to have conviction in what you're doing if you're going to risk money in the market. If not, you get chopped up. Your summer wins, summer losses, and like I said, overall, all the money that you're losing, you're giving into other people's positions and trades in the market. You're giving it to them. And if you want to trade like everybody else, you're going to lose. So you have to do something different. For me, it's shorting. For me, it's the fast trades. For me, it's momentum. For me, it's gaps. All of those things combined. Also, the way that I do options. A lot of, like, a lot of people, I buy a put and sell it. I buy a call and sell it. A lot of people aren't trading options that way. Because right or wrong, I'm going to win or lose. Like I told you, I lost on the apple. So I got to be right or that trade's going to lose. I got to get the momentum in my trades or I'm not going to make money in it for what I'm paying for some of these things. So if I get the direction right and the timing and the momentum, it's profitable. But for me, having an edge is really rating the gap and getting ready in the pre-market and, and mostly shorting. But you've got to have an edge if you want to do this and be successful. And the thing is, you can. You can. You absolutely can. And if you were honest with yourself, you probably realize that or you wouldn't be trading. I mean, I would think that you wouldn't continue to trade the market and risk money every day if you're trading or every week if you think that you could never make it. If you really thought you were never going to be successful at this, what the hell are you wasting your time for? I mean, why are you trading? That, that is like, that is ridiculous to me. So some part of you probably knows that you can make it, that it is possible, that you can be successful, okay? It's just you're not on the path yet if you're not. And you have to make a determination what you want to do about that. But opportunity sets up daily and gas, which counts to trade for a living. That's what we've been talking about. And then we were talking about earlier how much I spend so much time getting ready, so much time doing the prep work, so much time, you know, preparing compared to what I trade. So this is a really bad pie chart that I made. This circle is definitely not round, but this is all the time that I'm preparing to trade and then the amount of time I spend trading. So the thinking is here. The doing is here. The doing is easy once the thinking is done. Does that make sense? So we're going to go over last week's day trades here. Again, these are trades on margin. You need a margin account to do them. You could do puts in the day trades I call if you want to, but I'm doing day trades and options. The options I do, I call in the newsletter. 10,140 last week, and there were days we didn't trade. So uh, the first day of the week we did NVIDIA. It was the 18th. We actually lost in NVIDIA. This was a whippersnapper on this day. Stock close here, gap down, fell. We were up initially in this, then it flipped. Lost in the NVIDIA. So the first trade we did in the week was a loser. Did it again. Lost a second trade in NVIDIA. Again, it was a whippersnapper. Gap down here, set up again. Stopped on the second trade in NVIDIA. And then I did the SPY. This was on the 18th. And I made money in a late trade on the SPY. This was on Monday. I shorted this late into the rally here and got the drop. So Monday was a day where I had two losers and one winner. Um, then I also did the cues, same thing. I, this was like similar to the SPY trade. It was a baby winner, but basically I lost on Monday. This was Monday a week ago. Then got up in the morning and I did the SPY. So that was the 19th. So this was Tuesday and we had a huge trade in the SPY. Again, you would need a margin account to do this trade. You could take a hundred shares. You could take a thousand. You need margin. Entered the trade at 442.55, took 4,000 shares. We had a great stop in this. Added, added into the position, got the drop. Average price was 442.40, exited here. This was a nice trade, huge trade. Again, this is this day here. Stock close here, gap down. We got the sell off here. This was Tuesday the 19th. You could have taken less size. 
you also could have bought a, a put. Now, I was already in puts, but you could have bought a put and day traded a put for the daily expiration of the 19th for the SPY. There are daily expirations now for the SPY and the QQQs. So that, that was not what I called on the newsletter. I'm calling the weeklies, the Fridays, but you could have played this trade that way. <laughs> and I say this because of the fact that if you don't have the margin to take a trade like this, you can do the put. And then I, if you're going to do it as a day trade, I do the daily expiration. I'm not calling daily expiration, so. But I know there's people in the room that are doing this. So there's another idea of how to do it and how to play it as a day trade. We did the square too. I killed this. I should have held this. But anyways, I killed the square. I could have made more. This did eventually go to my target. I made a little bit of money in the square. This was the same day on the 19th, but I got out of it. And then the next day I didn't do it. I should have done it here too, but I only did it here. So I made a little bit of money in the square that was Tuesday. 920, no trades. We didn't do any trades then at all. And then that was the day, remember, that the Fed was going to talk. And I said, nope, there's nothing good today. Let's wait. Let's wait it out. Let's see what happens. What we did. We did the market all last week, Kara. I'm <laughs> actually looking at this. There was, there was just too many good setups in the market not to do it. 921, then Thursday, we did the market. So that was here. Stock close here, gap down. We shorted it. And again, I got in, got out. But this went all the way down. Crazy. Again, I do my day trades and get in and out fast. We shorted it. 435.60, got out at 434.50. This is a good solid trade. I'm risking one amount, trying to make one amount. This is a day trade. I must be out of this by four. We sold off though into the close on Thursday and you could have held this all the way down. So I forget exactly where we closed, but we broke 432. You could have doubled this if you held it. Again, you could have done the daily put expiration if you don't want to do something that's $435 a share. The market's expensive, not a day trade. I get it. We're not doing the market every day. It seems like we did last week, but there was just, it was just good gaps in the market. And then Friday, we didn't do anything. Since buying calls and puts is assignment ever a risk? I don't know what you mean by that. You must exit your trade before Friday, if that's what you mean. Why would, if that's what you're talking about, I mean, you got to get out of your trades. What do you, is that what you mean? Jeff's asking a question. I'm not sure exactly what he means. No, if you, I think I'm trying to read Jeff's mind. Um, I think what Jeff is talking about is if you should happen to still be in a trade, like let's say you, I'm just making this up here. We didn't do this. But let's say you went, let's say you bought a call in, I uh, can't even think of anything right now that I like. Um, just say you bought a call in something today and it expires Friday and you're up Friday, whatever, a little, medium, a lot. If you don't exit that call, meaning you don't sell it, so you bought the call, you're through the strike, you're up in the train, you forget. You, you fell asleep, you were drunk, you went to bed, I don't know, you were sick, you didn't get out of it Friday. You will, That will convert into shares into the next week that you will own the stock, whatever you bought. I think that's what Jeff is saying, but no one should ever be doing that because we're actively trading. That means you got to get in and you got to get out. I think that's what you mean. Yeah. Um... Is there a prop firm that will let you trade options? None that I know of, but there's could be one out there. Uh, thank you very much. You admire me a lot. Thank you for your time and advice. You think you, you think about it, and I'm right. I am right, Sergio. You got to you got to join. You got to save up the money and join. Um, my suggestion you don't you don't need a prop firm though to trade options, Jannar, because wait. You can open up an account with $2,000, which is a small amount of money. You're not going to get anything cheaper at a prop firm. A prop firm is going to make you put up $2,500. So you can go retail and open up a cash account at any place you want to in the U.S. retail options for two grand. So you don't, I don't know why you want a prop account to do options. The prop is margin for under $25,000. 
And really, you need more than that. Because if you get, if you if you lose a penny at twenty four nine 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 nine, they're gonna shut you off. So you need okay more than twenty five thousand, or you go prop for margin options. You can go retail. You can open up an account tomorrow. Walk into a branch anywhere. Bing bam boom. Deposit two thousand dollars. You can trade like that. Fill out the paperwork. You don't. You don't. You ha You can open up a small options account, and I would have set it up as a cash account. So you don't have restrictions about how many trades you get in and get out. And so Jeff was asking about this thing, that thing. We're not long-term investors. You're trying to make money. Now, today, tomorrow, this week, by Friday, you want to buy Christmas presents in a couple of months, a couple of weeks. You want to buy, take advantage of the sales Columbus days coming up. You are making money right now. That's what you want to do. You don't want to buy the stock and hold it until 2025. And why would you want to do that anyways? Who knows what's, can you look at this? Look at this market. Why would you even, do you think that anybody, like, it's crazy to think about that. I mean, again, if you're young and you're in long-term retirement, it's like, look, think about what could happen next year. If we have an election year, we're in a higher rising interest rate environment. It's like, do you really want to be trading for a long time right now anyways? Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, even if you liked that type of trading and were more acclimated to that, I don't think that's probably the best thing for you to be doing right now. Uh, Sergio has to continue with your studies. Yeah, you can, you can sign out if you gotta go, Sergio, if it's late for you, of course. Um, the PPD only applies if you're in out the same day. If you hold overnight, the PDV is not a factor. Um, well, I, I, if you have, that's well, right. If you have, if you want to be in, out, in, out, in, out, then you have to have a margin account or you have, if you have an options account, you have it set up as cash. There's something else I was going to say and I forgot. Anyways, there's plenty of different you can find what works for you is the point so you say okay i have this much money now what do i do if you don't if you don't know i can tell you or you call a broker and find out but there's plenty of ways to do it and figure it out is my point to make it work for you okay anyways this was a good week considering we didn't have we had one day i lost i started out the week down and then i had two days i didn't even train so, you know, it's, this is, this is probably like not even a good week considering, do you know what I mean? We had, we had a better week trading options last week just because I was in things since from the week before, you know, but earning season will have a lot of day trades. And again, that starts in October. So getting back to the topic here, if you want to consistently make a lot of money in the market, the only way that will happen is if you have number one, a high winning strategy Number two, good money management. And three, a good mentor to follow. And I think that helps people. I sent out an email today. It had a room day on it. Whatever day it was, I forget, where I taped the room. And I talked people through the trade. Have conviction, have conviction, have conviction. Because at the end of the day, if you, if you, if you want to do this, you need conviction in what you're doing. If you don't have conviction, you either don't understand what to do. Or again, like I said, you have too much risk on but time of the day is key. Very, very important. Again, we trade in the morning and you could do this from home, which is nice. Like it's been pouring raining all day today. If I had to get on the train, if I worked somewhere in Manhattan, if I had to work downtown at Wall Street, if I had to work at the NASDAQ and I'd take the train today, I'd be sopping wet to go, by the time I showed up at work, I'd be in a miserable mood probably from that. And I'd be, I'd be sopping wet coming home. It's been pouring, pouring buckets all day in Manhattan today. All weekend, actually. So it's so nice to have to work from home. And it's just like so, like, I have lovely lighting on. I can just do my own thing here. It's warm. I don't have to go out in the pouring down rain. So trading is about chunking it out. It's income generation. Trading, trading, trading. And you're doing it. And you're chunking it out by booking the money. And that's how you're getting somewhere. And again, I talked about this. You have to believe, number one, in yourself. But you have to believe it's possible you can make money from the market. It is. And I think, like I said, a lot of people realize that. And if, if you don't, if you don't anymore, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't continue trading is my point. Because, I mean, you're sort of like going into the market with a negative attitude. Then how do you expect to be successful? 
you can do this. And I think it helps if you get someone's help, which obviously, you know, my job is to teach people and help people that come and pay me for the class. You're paying me for my information and you're also paying me for my time. So empower yourself to trade the market. If you're interested, you can take the class. The class is this weekend, for it's September class, but Saturday is September 30th and Sunday is October 1st. The Golden Gap course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. The course teaches you price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. It teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power in charts. It teaches how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. It teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis and gaps. And it teaches how to get conviction in your trading in the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for consistent profit. So the class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. And again, the class is this weekend, uh, 9.30 and 10.01 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. I'm running a fall special that's going on through this Friday. Friday is also the deadline to sign up to take the class anyways. There's only three more classes left this year. If you get in and learn this class, you can get in and start trading for earnings season because the next class isn't until the end of October. So if you sign up by Friday, you will get the trading room free till the end of the year, the options newsletter free to the end of the year, and the market report free until the end of the year. The class tuition is always $69.99 and everyone pays the same. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Any other questions from anyone? So again, I have no idea where we go this week because it could be another volatile week. We have some big data out tomorrow morning and we have Drone Pal talking Thursday. So it's going to be a wild week. But remember, volatility allows for opportunity if you know how to play it. If you don't, then you may not have a good week. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But, you know, again, if you don't know what to do, I, I say take a step back. Any questions? I see some familiar faces if you want to ask me questions. I'm here now. How's everyone doing? Good lecture. Thank you. Definitely feels like fall with this weather in New York the last three days. Gerard, you look new. Do you have any other questions for me? It's hard to believe that it's actually three months from today until Christmas. September 25th. It's I mean, this year has just gone so fast, but, you know, I'm really looking forward to the fall because we've had such a great, great month trading. If you have any other questions, email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. Again, um, oh, I don't have my email here. It's melissa at, it's up here, thestockswish.com. Uh, we have another question. Jurgen, I recognize you. Um, I, I rate the gap. That's the whole process I go through in the morning. That's what I was talking about. That's what you come and learn in the class. That's the 26 point system that takes you all weekend to learn. I know you've been wanting to sign up for a while now, Jurgen. I know you've been saving up to sign up. You know, if it helps people, you can put the class on more than one credit card as long as you pay the same day, if that helps you. Some of you have been following me for a long time, and I I hope you join. I think some of you missed out not doing the class last month with the month that we had. I think, I think people are, are so, you know, get into this rut, you know, about learning stuff. But learning is fun, and it's exciting when you put the information to good use and then you start trading and making money and then the cost of the class once you realize that the system works you don't worry about it anymore 
But of course, you're not going to know that till you do the class and you start trading. So that's that's the risk you take in life. It's like I moved a year ago. I didn't know I was taking a chance. What what it was going to be like living I mean, it's in a whole new neighborhood, a whole new building. As it turns out, it's better than expected. And very often that is the case in life when you're willing to take risk. I had a situation in my last building. I was living in the building and people were smoking pot and the smell was coming. It was 24 seven. It was in the middle of the night. It was, and it smelled like a skunk. It was so awful. And I said to myself, Oh my God, I'm moving. And what if there's somebody smoking pot 24 hours a day in this building? What am I going to do? You know, I felt confident that it was so much of a nicer building that I wouldn't have to deal with that, but you never know. I also want is moving in a new neighborhood. You don't know the neighborhood. You don't know the, the things that go on. But I made a great decision and it was better off. So you take chances in life to better your life. Otherwise, you can't better your life. And that's this is the process of going through decisions in life, whatever they are, whether it's taking a trading class, whether it's moving, whether it's getting married, anything. Anything is a big decision that you do. You gotta be willing to take risk. But if you're not willing to take risk, you can't, you can't make your life any better. Any other questions from anyone? Good questions today. Feel free to email me if you have any other questions. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Stay warm and dry. You're welcome.